<laughs> okay, so the lab is in your packet. It is the electrolyte, non electrolyte paper. No, I want you to fail, so go ahead and leave it put away. Okay, conductivity of solutions. Oh, wait, I should get it. So let me explain the setup I've got up here. I have done that which you should never do. I have taken a lamp cord and I've cut the wire. And I've exposed the ends of the wire. And I have light bulbs. And so when I touch, okay, when I turn it on, and I touch the ends of the wire, the light bulb lights up. So if electricity is able to travel between the wires, we will see that visually as the light bulb lighting up. I also have two wattages of light bulb. I have a 34 watt, and I have a 100 watt. And so we will be able to not only distinguish electrolytes and non-electrolytes, we'll be able to distinguish between oh, strong and weak electrolytes. If the 100 watt can light up, it's a strong electrolyte. If only the 34 watt can light up, it's a weak electrolyte. If nothing happens, it's obviously a non-electrolyte. Okay, and then I have, uh, the list is on the top of your paper, I have the solutions mixed up that we're going to go through on the top. Now I want to clue you in before we start that there's two criteria that need to be met for something to be an electrolyte. Sure where to find it. Okay. Two criteria must be met for something to be an electrolyte. Something has to be dissolved. We're talking about solutions this chapter. You need a solution. So something has to be dissolved. And that something that is dissolved must ionize. If both criteria are not met, you will not have an electrolyte. Then those that dissolve and ionize just a little will be a weak electrolyte. And those that ionize a lot will be a strong electrolyte. Now first up on your list is? Distilled water. Distilled water. OK. So I showed you yesterday. I showed you yesterday how Bill Murray's character sat in the bathtub, dropped in the toaster, and you're led to believe he killed himself with electrocution. And I said, if my bathtub was full of water, I'd be perfectly fine. My toast would simply be soggy. I'm about to prove it to you. So here is no, here is my 34 watt bowl. This cup represents my bathtub of distilled water. And the light bulb does work. And now as I stick the wires into the water. Touch the wire. Go for it, come on. Don't make the wires touch. <laughs> it does work. <laughs> but not in the water. Can you take your finger in? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Soggy toast, right? He said it don't work. What if he lied? Out of 14 <laughs> years of teaching, you're the only one who's ever done that. Just, just to let you know. Well, I'm not scared. And we would have had it on video, too. I wouldn't have been either. <laughs> you exactly. too. Thank you. Good job. Thank you. OK, so why? Because I put my hand in it. It doesn't ionize. <laughs> it does better. What doesn't ionize? The water. Well, what's the first criteria? Uh, nothing's dissolved. What's in deionized water? Nothing. 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 Exactly. This is absolutely, totally pure water. There is nothing in it. Nothing dissolved means nothing could be ionized. You are safe in a bathtub full of pure water. Are you filling your bathtub at home with pure water? No. No. Where are you getting your water at home? Uh, From the faucet, right? The tap. So next up, we have tap water, right? Wait, Mr. Bell, I have a question. 
Does it count as body salt? Like, if you're really sweaty and you go into the bathroom and then drop something in there? But let's talk about that. Okay, so this is tap water. So we get it from the water treatment plant into our pipes, into our house. So it's completely pure water, right? Sure. Um, no. <laughs> no, that, that's why you have to go to the store and pay extra for purified water. They make it safe to drink on a bacterial level. Maybe they take out some of the stuff that's dissolved in there, but they're not going to spend the time and money to take care of it. Oh, you have me on camera for that, right? <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Nah, we established this like a yes. while ago. I don't know oh my God. Shh. Just... Okay. <laughs> All right, so would I, if I fill my bathtub up just from the mm -hmm. faucet, would I have an issue with my toaster? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So you do not do that in real life because it really could hurt you a lot. Is it going to necessarily guarantee you're dead? Unfortunately, probably not. You very likely would live through it Unfortunately. and regret that you would live through it. Unfortunately. It would hurt a lot. Yes. Can I look at that one? No, you're not allowed to. Okay. So, if it is an electrolyte, tell me the two criteria that obviously are met. Dissolved um, Yeah. Stuff has dissolved, and the stuff that is dissolved has ionized. Okay, now we could dissolve other stuff. What's next? Uh, magnesium sulfate in distilled water. Okay, magnesium sulfate is referred to as Epsom salt. So if you're a fan of bath salts, that certainly, this would be one of those ingredients, most certainly. Okay? Oh, okay then. Okay, now that's the 34 watt bulb. Let's try the 100. What kind of electrolyte? Strong. Strong. Strong electrolyte. So if you were hanging out in a bathtub full of sea salt or Epsom salt or bath salts or whatever else you might want to add to your bathtub and someone dropped the hair dryer in, you are in trouble. It's going to go bad quickly. So salts. Now let's talk about that. Should make sense. Do salts dissolve? Yes. Yeah. Do they ionize? Yes. Obviously they do. So salts ionize very well, at least magnesium sulfate does. What's next? Ethanol. Ethanol. So what is ethanol? Is that the old stuff or the, the stuff old people use or something? <laughs> no, that's formaldehyde. Never mind. <laughs> A little bit different there. I don't know what it is then. Been in the news recently for many years. Oh, okay. Which is really scary because <laughs> you're all about to drive. Okay. It's the yes. thing they add to the gasoline. I don't know. Oh. If you're driving an E85 vehicle, 85% 85 of it is this. If you're not, you're 10 oh. up to 10% is this. Okay. So ethanol is ethanol. So what's dissolved in ethanol? Ethanol. <laughs> wow. Okay, so we have a vote for nothing. Nothing dissolved in ethanol, that's fine. Yeah. Here's my 34 watt bulb. It does work. Let's try it. Ooh. Yeah. So ethanol is pure, so like our pure water with nothing dissolved, and there's nothing to ionize, there's nothing to transmit that current. Okay. What's our next one? Solid sodium chloride. Solid sodium chloride. Okay, so sodium chloride is otherwise known as salt. salt. Yeah, when you're like, hey, I need some salt for this hamburger, because we all put salt in our hamburgers, right? No. Only you. Not really. Yeah, I know. Oh, okay. Because they put it in the burger, not yeah. on the burger. Right. Anyway, uh, solid sodium chloride. We know really? salts dissolve well. We know they ionize well. Yet, I stick my wires in and... Why? Because it's not wet. No, it's not it, there's nothing for it to exactly. dissolve in. It is not dissolved. Yeah, it would ionize well, but at the moment it's not dissolved, so it's not going to. I keep some watches. Okay, well, what, what about the next one? Sodium chloride in distilled water. Sodium chloride in distilled water. So, yes. 
Yeah, what's the difference this time? It's, it's dissolved. Really? It's yes. dissolved, okay. No, okay. 34 watt bulb works really well. Let's Wait, so if it, if it doesn't do the 100, mm -hmm. is it just weak? Yeah. Or, oh. Salts make for some very good electrolytes. You know they shut down NRH2O when they see lightning. If you were out on the ocean and see lightning, that's an even bigger issue. Because there's certainly a lot more salt in the water in the ocean than at NRH2O. <laughs> All right. What do we have next? Sodium chloride and ethanol. Sodium chloride and ethanol. What do we know about sodium chloride so far? It's um, it only it um, will ionize and it will dissolve. dissolve. Okay, yet in ethanol it doesn't. You don't know. Gosh, you don't know. I win. So what is this proving? We know salt would ionize well. So what must be true about salt and ethanol? It doesn't dissolve into ethanol. It doesn't dissolve. And if it doesn't dissolve, it doesn't have that chance to ionize. And truly, every single grain of sodium chloride I've put into this cup is still here, even today, like 24 hours later. No, no dissolving happens. Because like dissolves like, and ethanol is not like salt. So they don't, it doesn't dissolve. What about the next one? Sucrose and distilled water. Sucrose. Sugar. Shh, you gave it away. Who doesn't know that? I oh, hope everyone knows that. Okay, so sucrose. Okay. Sucrose is? Sugar. Sugar, yeah, fancy name for it. This is the sugar we're used to eating as in the little white grains. There's also fructose and dextrose and other sugars <coughs> that if you eat your fruits and vegetables, you probably are eating at the same time. Okay, but sucrose is the one we purify to make the little sugar packet things and sugar cubes and the granulated sugar and powdered sugar and all the yummy <laughs> stuff like that. Interesting question for you. Does sugar dissolve? Yes. Yeah, duh, right? Does it ionize? I don't no. think so. Let's find out. Now I remind you, my light bulb is on. So what are we proving about sugar? It doesn't ionize. <clears throat> it doesn't ionize. And both criteria must be met, not just one, both must be met in order for it to work. Okay, so we're used to that not ionizing. Now, I have an interesting one for you. Yes. It's... We're ready for sucrose and ethanol, right? Yes. Okay. Sucrose was a non-electrolyte. Ethanol was a non-electrolyte. In this case, though, we're mixing two non-electrolytes, and then suddenly we're going to find... <laughs> Did I get you? No. 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 Liar. I got you. I know I did. A little bit. <laughs> I was expecting something and then, you know. Yeah, yeah. You don't have to lie for my feelings. I don't have any. True. Okay. You know that. Yeah, so maybe some of the sucrose dissolved. It is very possible because sucrose is a lot more alike to ethanol than salt was. Um, maybe a little has dissolved, but even if it did dissolve, it's not going to ionize, regardless of what you dissolve it in. So it definitely would be a non-electrolyte from both ideas. There. Okay, what do we have next? Hydrochloric acid. Ooh, hydrochloric acid. <laughs> it's so magical. Okay. For anything to be an acid or a base, it must be dissolved in water. That is one of those criteria to claim that something's an acid or claim that something's a base must be dissolved. So now that it is dissolved, the question is how well does hydrochloric acid ionize? So here's my 34 watt light, and here it is in hydrochloric oh, acid. Why, uh, why did it pop? It's really strong. It, okay, so here's my 100 watt light bulb. And keep in mind, the way I'm holding the wires puts them on pretty much the opposite ends of the cup. It is, uh. it is that strong that we get that spark uh. as it enters. Will it pop the bulb? Uh, it shouldn't. I mean, it's not creating heat. It's just creating electricity. We know plastic and electricity don't mix, so we're okay. So here's 
what I want you to remember a whole other chapter later, like four days from now when we're talking about strong and weak acids. Okay? A strong acid is, by definition, a strong electrolyte. Okay? We call it a strong acid because it ionizes very, 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 very well. So remember that when we get back to strengths of acids and bases, a strong acid is a strong electrolyte. They're one in the same definition. Okay, what's next? Sodium hydroxide and distilled water blank. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Sodium hydroxide, anyone have an idea? Ever heard of it before? Yes. Uh, no, yes. I haven't heard of it, in but I test. think it's... <coughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. We told you way back long ago in the reactions chapter, anything ending in hydroxide is a base. base. So this is a base. It also used to be referred to as lye. If you ever hear old people talk about using concentrated lye or washing their hands with lye soap, it, it's bad stuff. So I'm glad that we don't do that anymore. But that's, that's a common name for this. Okay. It's, again, for an acid to be an acid and a base to be a base, they have to be dissolved in water. So the question is, this is a base. Is it a strong base or a weak base? There's no light bulb. There is no light bulb. <laughs> I was like, why is that a non-electrolyte? Oh, because there's no light to light up. <laughs> this is my 100-watt bulb. What do you think? It's strong electrolyte. Yeah. And therefore, we do totally classify sodium hydroxide as a strong base. You should have just let them like. Yeah. <laughs> and we got that on camera. If I didn't say it, I didn't say it, somebody I else would have. I would have figured it out eventually. Sure. <laughs> you know, like, sure. Of course you would. Okay. What do we have next? Ammonia. 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 Okay, so ammonia is also a base. If you ever use a window cleaner that stinks, Isn't it's that got ammonia good? in it because it stinks. But that makes for being a base, it's a really good cleaner. It can dissolve things that water alone wouldn't dissolve. Be careful if you have tint on your car windows or house windows. Ammonia can be strong enough to start eating away at the tint. So don't clean your tinted windows with an ammonia cleaner. This is the 100 watt bowl. What do you notice? Nothing. Okay. So let's try the 34 watt bulb. And I remind you that it is on. Weak. So what kind of base would we classify ammonia? Weak. A weak base. And that's exactly how in like four more days when we talk about acids and bases, we will say it's a weak base because it does not ionize well. It obviously is dissolved, has to be to be a base, but it doesn't ionize well. Speaking of not ionizing well, what do we have next? Vinegar. Vinegar. Yum, yum. Don't we love vinegar? No. Have you ever wondered why we have something with such a weird taste? No. You've tasted it before? I'm sure you have. You just don't know it. Exactly. Well, I wouldn't know if it's a Vinegar weird Vinegar is actually a common cooking ingredient. You wouldn't notice well, they put it. put that in apples sometimes. Yeah, I mean, you, you pickle with it, you cook with it. No one really just sits around drinking it straight. That's just gross. Right? The taste of vinegar is acetic acid. That is what vinegar is, usually about 5% acetic acid. So when you go buy a $3 bottle of like one gallon, 5% of what you're buying is, is acetic acid, the rest is water. So you're pay, pretty much paying for plastic and water and a little you, acetic acid along with it. What's well, just pure acetic acid then? Well, that, that would be a lot more costly. Okay, so is it supposed in to my work? vinegar, it is supposed to. <laughs> maybe. Is that the oh, one? it's finally. Yeah, there. Okay, just you can maybe, if you look closely, tell the, the wire. Inside nope. the light bulb. Oh. No, okay, my wires are touching, sorry. <laughs> we don't want them to touch. I think I just need to stir this up better or something. Anyway, those close by can see the wire inside is just barely glowing. Which actually oh. is a good thing. If this is a cooking ingredient, do you want to be cooking with a strong acid? No. No, you don't want to be cooking or eating a strong acid, so it's a good thing it's a weak acid. Okay, 
Pepsi. Next up, some of my favorites. Pepsi. Pepsi. Oh yeah. I love Pepsi. 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 Have you memorized the ingredient label of Pepsi can like I have? Nope. Are you? You really have? You've been drinking it for most of your life. Why I not? would be. I drink it all the time, but I don't have it memorized. What do you want for you? <laughs> okay. First ingredient: carbonated water. Remember back to our reaction slide. We put the carbonated water in the test tube and shook it up, yeah, and it popped the little cork off. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I know that really well. Carbonated yeah. water is <coughs> carbonic acid. So we do have an acid in there, and then it goes high fructose corn syrup because yum yum, we love our corn syrup. Do we? Yes, we do. Okay. And then there's caramel color, and then there's sugar, which is why I really like Pepsi, because there's two sweeteners, because one is just not enough. And then we get phosphoric acid, then we have caffeine, and then we have ascorbic acid, and the sodium benzoate as preservative. The ingredient label has three acids in it. So what's your guess? Mark it down. Are we ready? I'm ready. Okay. Yes, I was ready. Learning for waffle. Aww. I hope you would guess weak acid, because if I'm going to drink this, I don't want to drink the strong acid. Okay. Speaking of which, if this is significantly weaker than my stomach acid, do I really need to be concerned about harming my stomach by drinking too much Pepsi? No. 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 My stomach is built to handle much worse acid than that. On the other hand, what body parts does it pass on the way to my stomach? Your esophagus. And my and teeth, teeth and my gums, yeah. and, and that yeah. stuff is not meant to handle acid. So you do want to be careful and not drink too much because there's other parts that are an issue. So anytime we think electrolytes, we think? Gatorade. 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 Looks awful. It does. All right. So Gatorade has electrolytes. Do we need electrolytes? Yeah. Yes, we sweat. No. No. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Okay. Well, let me, you do know. Let's figure this out. How do the messages from your brain get to your muscles to say move? They're electric signals. Do you have wires in your body to transmit those electric signals? No. <laughs> You don't have wires in your oh, body. We won't cut you a little bit. Wire. No, I'm like, do oh. we have literal wires? No. So instead <laughs> of traveling through literal wires, what does those signals travel through? Electrolytes. So does your body have electrolytes? Yes. Does your body need electrolytes? Yes. Now the real debate is not that. That's not the real debate about Gatorade. The real debate about Gatorade is do you need to drink electrolytes? Well, first off, what kind of electrolyte are we going to be drinking? Have you made your guess? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. And that's only my 34 watt bulb. Now that makes sense because I don't want to be drinking a strong something. One of the biggest ingredients in Gatorade is sugar. Can you guess what? No. Yes. Where's the electrolytes in Gatorade come from? Sugar. We've got an ingredient label there. Where's the electrolytes come from? Sodium. Sodium. That's, uh, that's power. It's not the same. Sodium what? <laughs> it's just a sodium. And Chlorine. In the ingredient label, it, it should say like Chlorine. water and then what? High fructose corn syrup. And then. Acid, salt yeah. and mono potassium phosphate. Yeah. Keep going. Or is there anything more? And magnesium chloride and calcium chloride. Electrolytes. Yeah. Ascorbic acid. Really so if I counted correctly, <laughs> four <laughs> salts. <laughs> How tasty <laughs> is salt water? It's that's so good. That's delicious. Uh, right. Exactly. So that's why we add the sugar, the high fructose <laughs> corn syrup. Which really means that uh, you're, you're, you're doing as much bad as good unless you really need the electrolytes. So who needs the electrolytes? How do you lose electrolytes from your body? Sweating. By sweating. Some of the salts come out in your sweat. 
if you are a well-seasoned athlete, you practice long hours in the same environment in which you play in, and it's good aerobic workout time, your body will naturally hold a lot of those salts in. You will have a lot less salt in your sweat than if you're like me and the only time you set up, step foot outside is once a week to mow. <laughs> so, when it's 110 you're behind a mower outside, you can't help but sweat. So, yeah, a well-seasoned athlete really doesn't need Gatorade unless you have been sweating a huge amount and you might need a little bit of salt added to it. If you're a football player, I'm sorry, but football to me does not seem like a well-seasoned anything. Oh, because hello. how do football players play? They line up and hold still. They wait for the ball to be touched and moved, and then they suddenly run as hard as they can for like two yards before hugging the guy in front of them and falling to the ground. <laughs> so, that is hard on your body, to be totally still and then move as fast and hard as you can and then stop suddenly and then repeat that over. That's hard on your body. You would need Gatorade. Just like me going outside only once a week to mow and only to mow, I would need Gatorade. So that leads me to the thought, I love Pepsi, not Gatorade. And Pepsi has electrolytes and Gatorade has electrolytes. Why can't I just drink Pepsi instead of Gatorade? Too much sugar doesn't have what makes the electrolytes in our body the ones that send our signals? Salts or acids? Salts. Gatorade has salts, Pepsi has acids. They're both electrolytes, but only one's going to work in our body as the proper electrolyte. So yeah, um, you might want Gatorade if you're not used to being very active outside and sweating a lot. If you're used to it, water's probably just fine unless you do a really extended like all day sort of practice you're probably going to need that just if nothing else for the carbs and then finally pickle pickle strong okay is it like a literal pickle is it or is it pickle juice um, it should be a, a legit pickle. A pickle. pickle i don't want to tell you it's a pickle you have to yes I've seen this it's strong i love pickles pickle like how do you make a pickle Vinegar. It's a cucumber and you, yeah. Yeah, it's a cucumber and then you pickle it. In okay. vinegar. Because you can pickle onions, pickle eggs, you can pickle metal. Pickle onions are gross. Those are disgusting. You have to smell that. Are you serious? You onions like pickle awesome. Ugh. Okay. Ingredients to these pickles. Oh, wow, that's tiny. <laughs> Cucumbers, water, vinegar, Salt, alum chloride, <laughs> alum calcium chloride. I believe in you. Um, I wouldn't want to eat these. Natural flavorings, sodium benzoate, Why are you yelling? and potassium. <laughs> so you can hear me around the large jar of pickles. It's not that big. <laughs> more preservatives really? and more preservatives in yellow I number can't five. Even okay. I honestly would never suggest eating this. This just sounds disgusting. Can you like that? But you what things have I listed off? Salt. 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 Acids Vinegar. and lots of salts, right? So, we have a cucumber <laughs> that <laughs> has been soaked in lots of acids and salts. <laughs> so you're going down? <laughs> and I have a done, again done that which you should never do. Just take your finger and put it on. I have taken a lamp cord. I have wrapped the ends around two nails. You savage. <laughs> and now I am Frankensteining the pickle. my pickle. It's dripping. Yes, it does that. <laughs> okay. Oh, you're gonna just start a fire. Spark. I don't trust this oh, anymore. Oh, you're getting farther away from Whoa. After a while. Whoa. That's so cool. If it explodes, I'm not even... <laughs> what? what? <laughs> Why did it move from one to the other? Ew, it smells bad. I, I, I can't oh, even smell this. <laughs> well, he's standing over here with his pickle hands. Uh, <laughs> <laughs>
Electrocuting a pickle, what it smell? Oh, now I smell it. Ain't gonna have it. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like for real. No, I'm just kidding. You said for real, though. No, I was just gonna say. For real? Yeah. <laughs> Not for you, you gotta eat it now. No, you gotta eat it. I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it. Can you Let me bite it when you're done. <laughs> Why don't you touch it? <laughs> Something about electricity traveling through the wires. <laughs> How about you just come up and take a bite right now? <laughs> okay, so you have questions now on your lab sheet to fill out. Be certain that you get those filled out. And it is due today before you leave.